What is the subconscious goal that we spend the most time trying to get? And why is this goal one of our best predictors of well-being? As a research organization, the most predictive question of a child's long-term well-being that we have found is, did you feel like an outsider in your family? Why is that so predictive? What is centeredness? In order to understand what is going on, we need to go back in time. In early human history, your position in the group was highly important to your survival. If you were a high-ranking member of the tribe, the tribe was far more likely to come to your defense during a fight, make sure you and your family were fed, or make sure you didn't get left behind during a hunt. The opposite was true for the lowest ranking member. You won't get fed if food is in short supply. You are least likely to get assistance during a fight with an animal or neighboring tribe. In other words, you and your family were far less likely to survive in such a difficult environment. People who didn't obsess about their position in the group, they simply died out, didn't pass on their genes. Therefore, the genes that got passed on were those that cared deeply about their position in the group. We are still hardwired to subconsciously obsess about our importance to whichever groups give us safety. We constantly gauge our group value and acceptance. We want to understand if we're in the inner circles of these groups and if our status is rising or falling in these groups. If we feel that we aren't centered in a group, we often reject the group morals and try to find a group with different morals. This child is lucky. He has a close relationship with both mom and dad, which only happens to about one in eight kids. Even though they correct him as needed, he can tell that they light up when they see him. He would say he is definitely in the inner circle of his family. He also feels highly valued in his friend group and at his church. At school, he doesn't feel quite as valued, but it's rare for anyone to feel highly valued in all of their environments. He has optimal levels of the body chemicals oxytocin and cortisol. He is likely to have a mostly calm life, adopt the morals and views of his parents, make good choices throughout adulthood, and have a high level of well-being. His sister is not as fortunate. Her parents tell her they love her, but she suspects they wish she were more like her brother. She has more emotions than him and wonders if she is flawed as a person. This makes her sad and she lashes out at family members. This only makes it worse because it further strains the relationships and makes her feel even farther from the family inner circle. In other groups, she lashes out occasionally and is quickly excluded from the inner circle of those groups as well. She is frequently on edge, nervous about not being valued, will often adopt morals and views that are the opposite of her parents, make risky life choices, and have a low level of well-being and happiness. Her oxytocin levels are too low and cortisol is too high. If the sister doesn't feel valued in her key groups, she will attempt to find a group that does value her Maybe she will get lucky and find a group of A students, but more likely she feels accepted by a group of other marginally valued children that engages in self-destructive behavior such as drug abuse. Let's look at how adult behavior is often around our quest for the inner circle of groups. This is a key reason why I subconsciously want to spend more and more money for higher status things like a fancy car. I subconsciously think it's going to help me move towards the inner circle in my key groups or will at least preserve my place in the inner circle. This is a reason why we like compliments. When we receive compliments, we feel closer to the inner circle. It's why we feel negative emotions when someone in the group implies a negative trait, such as a lack of intelligence, lack of skill, or poor relationship skills. When someone points out our negative character trait, what they're really implying and what I'm hearing subconsciously is, I don't belong in the inner circle. An enormous amount of our time and energy is spent trying to get into the inner circles of our groups. If we feel we can't get in the inner circle, we try to leave and join groups where we think we have a chance of feeling centered. For children, the group that means more than perhaps all the rest put together is their family. But what can we do to feel more centered now? How do we heal from feeling like an outsider in the past? And how do we make our loved ones feel centered? We cover these in other videos, but they include things like learning the science of how to build deep bonds, learning social skills, and prioritizing oxytocin activities with safe people.